Welcome to a very special episode. It's the extravaganza. Of the Ramble and Fly <laughs> extravaganza. Cheers to episode 10, 10 episodes down of the Ramble and Fly. There we are. That we're having an extravaganza for. I, I did just... manage to convince Adam to come to Colorado come instead of going back to Colorado to a hot fishing report in Montana. I know. It shouldn't have been it shouldn't have happened, but it did. So we're fishing here in Colorado for four days, and at the end of each day, we are going to have a recap of the podcast. Throughout the whole trip, basically Adam is fishing some new rivers to him, so it'll be easy for him to explain like what's going through his head as he approaches a new river. And then I'll kind of dive into the little bits of the rivers that I know and basically just show you our successes and failures and you know what happens when things don't go our way and what happens when you know our plan comes together and hopefully we find some fish. Well, we had a little bit of both today. So, so hopefully you guys like this format. If you do, we want to keep doing some more of these. Uh, this is a plan that uh, Brent and I have kind of had from the beginning on the podcast to be able to kind of fish and podcast at the same time. So I think it's going to bring in kind of a cool aspect. But real quick, if you're watching and you have not yet, make sure that you go follow Ramblin' Fly on Instagram on YouTube. This one is probably going to be a little better served watching. I hope there's going to be some cool audio visual. Yeah, if you're things. listening and on a long drive, we'll get some tips in there. We'll try and cut it down short enough you can hear it. But you should be watching this one, especially. I mean, it's pretty exciting. We got Adam out to Colorado, and we're going to learn him a thing or two about our 6X. And, uh, Doubt it. I didn't learn anything about 6X today. I didn't have to do 6X today. Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> I hope not. All right, so first day. We went and fished a local river uh, that you've fished quite a while, but we fished a different stretch of river. Yeah, this today. is a this is a stretch that I don't know anyone. I didn't know anyone until this year that had fished it. So was, I guess to start off, how is this piece of water something that you decided we were going to go float today? I guess to start off with, and how is this a new piece of water for you? But was not very not a very far drive today. Right. So the reason I even thought about fishing it was because a buddy of mine's there might be some stuff going on up there. Some, some stuff. So yeah, some fishing so, going on. Some local intel. Yeah. Said local we intel. could fish a river. Yeah. So, so we did. So we did that. <laughs> but I, I think the reason this section doesn't get fished very often is because uh it doesn't look that visually appealing. It doesn't have all the kinds of pockets and like picture perfect runs. I would also say the scenery was not as pretty as some of the surrounding floats that we've done. Yep. Yeah, that's true. The yeah, so not only you're right, not only the water wasn't as scenic, but you know, kind of looking around wasn't as scenic either. Totally. Yeah. And there is no improved boat ramp, so you you pretty much have to do a raft or a carry. You have to be able to carry your vessel. Kayak or canoe. 150, or... 200 yards. Yeah, it was not a short takeout that we had. Yeah. Basically, you don't want to bring a drift boat there. It would not be enjoyable. So would you say most people around here have drift boats? Or most people have rafts? Or are there more I would like... say there's more rafts. But even, a, even most people... People's rafts that I've seen, that would still be a really serious haul. Yeah, like a full size 13, 14 foot raft would be. That would be a haul. Yeah. That we did. Yeah. So this morning, I had an option of probably six different areas or six different rivers, floats, whatever that we wanted to do, but we chose this one. Right. So why did we end up choosing this one today over? One of the other options around in the area. Yeah. So the the quick and dirty version of this is there's two rivers near me. One of them is known for lots of fish. And basically, it's easier to fish, but it's not as, like, out there. It's not as scenic, kind of. It's pretty scenic, but it goes through town. But the water's really low, so it's kind of technical to row through. It's... Like, you're always got to be on the oars, which is fine, but sometimes it's not ideal. And the lower sections of the river that I you know, fish quite a bit, 
don't have the best reports right now for streamer fishing, which we obviously want to streamer fish. So it was either go for lots of medium sized fish or go down low where the reports aren't that good or go to this unknown stretch where we had one report that was probably embellished a bit, but uh, usually reports are. So we figured first day of the trip, let's go swing for the fences. And if we get, if we get our asses kicked, we get our asses kicked. We got three days to like go figure something out. So we leave the trip on a positive note. Yep. Okay. So I'd say wind also factored in to today's choice as well. Yep. Uh, we were checking the weather forecasts. Looks like uh, today was going to be relatively windy. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow is supposed to be actually a hair windier. Which is like approaching 20 miles an hour. That's Yeah. That's Definitely high, high teens with gusts towards 20 for mm -hmm. sure. So I think the wind also kind of pushed us to where we went today as well, right? Yep. Yeah, a little more protected from the wind. Although the medium-sized lots of fish is usually pretty protected by the wind. Yep. Which is probably what we're going to bail to tomorrow. Uh, to stay out of the wind. And then we'll go back for bigger fish on Wednesday, Thursday. So I think that hopefully gives you guys a little bit of like just a small amount of insight into like what are we thinking when we choose, okay, we're going to go do this float today. Yeah. Right? A lot of different, there's a lot of variables that all line up. I mean, I, I remember, I mean, last night we were talking for, yeah, we were going back and forth and back and forth for an hour, hour yeah. and a half on what stretch we were going to fish. I was like, what do you, what do you want? Do you want to come in first day and like knock it out, get some fish in the net? Or do you want to swing for the fences, go for the big fish and then make up the numbers on the end of the trip so it feels good at the end? Or No, I think that's, that's and even the mental and kind of the morale is it definitely totally. even comes into play, especially if you're, you're say you're hosting someone, like Brent's hosting me this week here, or even if it's you and your buddies are on a trip that y'all have never done before, right. keeping the morale right throughout the trip is also a factor. It's not always... Well, we heard there's, you know, these fish here. Sometimes you have to kind of yeah. play the reports and say, okay, it looks like we could go here and catch a bunch of fish. Yep. I mean, we we got into some fun fish today. Right. We finally got... Yeah, we actually, like, the report was big fish, low numbers, but we ended up catching... We actually kind of saw the opposite of that yeah, today. Yeah, good numbers and nothing huge. Um, but kind of keeping that morale as well is something to kind of factor in. Like, what? how do you personally want the trip to come away or or if you're fishing with some of your buddies maybe from out of town and y'all have gone somewhere being able to kind of talk through and say okay well i definitely we're here i want to catch try to catch a couple fish on dry today mm -hmm. i want to try to catch a couple fish on streamers or you know, you know will nymph if nothing else is happening yeah um half rod will nymph <laughs> Um, so anyways, I think that's yeah. the, a lot of different factors, uh, kind of go in choosing mm -hmm. what spot we're going to fish each day. Yeah. Well, that's interesting because I think fishing as a group or fishing with like two, three, four friends is becoming more popular. Yeah, I think more so. More and more people are getting into fly fishing, so it's becoming more popular. And that is one thing I have never heard talked about in a fly shop or there's no video on YouTube about how to keep the morale up yeah. on your fishing trip with your buddies. It's hard. And it can be. Yeah. can be hard. Totally. Yeah, you got to like, you know, you may not say, I want to go fish streamers for big fish. Johnny or whoever else I'm with might want to go catch a ton of fish on dry flies. Yeah. That's probably way different river. Yes. So, yeah, you probably got to like weigh those out and maybe find the medium, you know, this this river, you can catch them on dries and you can catch them on streamers. Or yeah, you definitely got to manage the morale. That's like, true. Because if you get done with the trip and you're ready to strangle the other <laughs> guys on the trip, it's like <laughs> doesn't matter how big a fish you caught. It probably wasn't that much fun. I've been there, Stephen. Looking at you. Let's roll into what happened today. What did we see? What did we learn? Yep. Kind of how do we make adjustments throughout the day? Part probably some of your like your takeaways from from today. Yeah. Uh, man. So, first thing, we rolled up like 200 yards below the boat ramp, and there was a run with snouts everywhere. Fish were rising 
across the entire river. Brent was up front first, and he had his head down pretty hard. You know, as soon as you get in the river, you're like, oh, here we go. We're ready. Mm -hmm. And uh, Brent was freaking on it. And I'm kind of looking, and Brent, and, I, and I've heard of, from other sources, and for Brent, that there's not really a lot of rising fish action in the area that we were fishing today. Yeah, they'll they'll rise, but it'll be like small pods, and they'll if you put the boat up close to them, they just go right back down. Push. Yeah. Well, I'm like kind of looking and watching. I'm like, those are those are heads. Like, there's a head. That was absolutely a head. And then it just kind of, I kept watching that area, and it kept going more and more, which I think is one thing to kind of note. Like, if you've got someone who's fishing, like, up front, let them fish. And the guy whose job it is to row is to be looking, you know, way down river, mm -hmm. seeing what's coming, what set, stretch of river you should be thinking about fishing, what's going to fish the best, or keeping an eye out for something like those pods. Right, yeah. I mean... That's something that I suck at seeing when I'm fishing because I'm like, oh, you're so dialed in to watching the, you know, how the streamer swimming. Well, especially if you're streamer fishing versus you know dry fly fishing where you're kind of looking up or bobber fishing where you're not even looking. But, <laughs> um, you know, dry fly fishing is a little different because you can, you know, you're looking usually further out. You're not throwing a dry like you know right down here. Sure. So I think it's a little easier to see. But it, it, I think that was a really good example today of kind of the teamwork that it takes mm -hmm. between the guy rowing and the guy fishing. Right. And as we were, so you saw the rising fish hundred yards out. So that way we knew the boat, we were going to be able to get the boat into position mm -hmm. without spooking the fish. Right. And we only tied up a streamer rod and a nymph rod. So Adam two, was able to, two like, streamer I rods. was able to, con yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I was able to continue fishing streamers as we floated down and Adam was able to, you know, start working on the dry fly rig, moving that over. So, yeah, that was, it was helpful to see it way ahead. Yeah. We had time to adjust. We didn't have to, like, anchor in an eddy and wait forever, and then the fish are done rising. Yeah, so, right. That happens a lot to me. The, ha the hatch is over as soon as you yeah. roll up on it. Oh, God, that's my least favorite thing. <laughs> we see this big pod of rising fish. We kind of start cruising in here. Brent can keep fishing the streamer a little ways. We get the dry fly rod rigged up. So we see some fish rising, right? Mm -hmm. there, there, I did not see a bug, personally. There's no bugs flying oh. around. There's no bugs crawling up your face and in your nose, right? Mm -hmm. Like, that would be an obvious, oh, hey, yeah, maybe you should throw a caddis around. because yeah. they're fucking in my glasses, right? right? So we roll up. You don't see bugs, but you see fish rising. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? To me, that means they're either eating emergers or... You're not close enough to the little hatch, and it turned out, I think, to be both. Yeah. I think we saw the whole hatch cycle because when we rolled up, there was nothing on the surface, and we weren't seeing snouts. Yep. Uh, so we, we were like, oh, they're probably eating emergers, so we'll tie a dry fly on so we can use that as an indicator and drag an emerger off behind it. So they, real quick, maybe we should tell the folks, right? So if you see a splash in the water mm -hmm. that doesn't a hundred percent always mean they're eating the same fly right mm -hmm. different you, if you start watching trout you'll start seeing slightly different behaviors when they eat different dry flies yep right like a grasshopper might be a bigger more aggressive eat, sure. more like maybe like a streamer eat mm -hmm. but you see the fish eating a fly on the surface, you might see the snout that Brent is referring to. Yeah, and they'll barely like sip it. Right, where you know you hear you know, you've heard the term like sip and dries or you. Um, but then you've also got if you have been around enough, but you, you know kind of just take some time on the water to figure these things out. But if you start looking, you can see them where they'll come up, but you don't. You just see kind of like a ripple almost where and the trout has come up. And then sometimes you'll see their dorsal fin. Mm -hmm. Like if you see the dorsal, they're probably not eating on the surface. They're eating a mergers, which would be just below the surface, right? Yep. So yeah, we did the small dry, true dry, and then, you know, an unweighted small nymph off the back, which we were using as an emerger, um, and that probably rides in the film of the water or just below the surface. So we fished that and actually got a few eats on that. Uh, but then as we got, you know, as we fished for a little, we started seeing midges on the surface. Yeah. Like full, full adult midges. 
and we stopped getting eats on the emerger so we swapped over to like a true dry fly floating midge and uh adam wore him out for a little bit <laughs> <laughs> yeah it got pretty good for a sec so one of the things i like to do uh, that we did today was i one of my favorite rigs in that scenario is the double dry to go to one dry that you think they may eat, but probably is just a hair bigger, so it's easier to see. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes those parachute atoms on, you know, that's great fishing a parachute atoms up in like North Carolina or super small creeks where you can, where you're not casting very far, you can still see it fine. Today, I mean, some of those casts we were making were 60 feet. Yeah, probably on the, on the far end. On the far end of 60 feet. A good 40 though. Yeah, 40 to 60 feet. Yeah. I don't care who you are, those are just freaking tough to see. Yeah, the way the light was and for how many fish there are it's not like it's not like there's one fish and if it comes up and eats it's probably your fly right you can't just there's right. fish all over your flies mm -hmm. so there's no way you would ever be able to see specifically with a like a parachute atoms right exactly like okay that one ate my fly Right, so I think that was a uh, that was a big part of. So you were using the, my rig, the first fly, the bigger my, one, as yeah. an indicator. No, it's a good fly. It's a caddis. I mean, it's not like. But there was no caddis around. I don't care about that. They don't know that. <laughs> so okay, so you use that as an indicator. But it's a, a anything an elk hair caddis, you know, isn't just a caddis, right? Or like a stimulator. Right. It looks like a lot of different things. Sure. Use uh, my first fly. I like to go to something that's really universally, you know. Again, just could imitate a lot of different things. But it's also not going to like spook them off. Exactly. Like, oh, there's yeah. A oh, what the heck? Right here's here. a yeah. Here's a caddis. What the heck? Yeah. You know. Yeah. Super nonchalant, but that thing floats like a cork, and you can see it from a mile away. Perfect. Then you drop. I don't know what a foot of tippet. A foot to two. Yeah. To a smaller dry fly. And sometimes my second dry fly, I'll grease up and make it float really well. Mm -hmm. This time I barely put any floating on that fly at all. So you wanted the ass hanging in the water. Yeah. yeah. I couldn't see that thing at all when it was, mm -hmm. when it was in there. It gets in those currents, it might even sink a little, but there's no way you could ever watch a fish eat that thing. I wonder if our emerger wasn't, or our emerger was too deep. Oh, this yeah, is like the could perfect have been. emerger. Yeah. Maybe that's true. Could be. It has a really thin piece of foam and just just getting the wings wet yeah. with the with gink. the gink stuff. Um but that was that was my ticket today. You were and that the rear most consistent with that. And that rear fly, mm -hmm. I mean that thing I mean you and you can watch that front fly in which you know, right, if especially if you take a couple test casts kind of close to you, mm -hmm. you make a test cast and kind of see, okay, there's the front fly. I can immediately see it. Yeah. Where's my back fly? It's within and, that foot around. Yeah, you kind of have a little there. radius, yeah. right? You see that front fly. Okay, my next fly is right around this ball right, right here. So if I so, see a rise there, I'm going to take the chance and set the hook. Right, exactly. Yeah. And sometimes I just knew. I just knew because this fish came <laughs> up and you, just... Well, you, sometimes you can tell. You've got <laughs> that, you see that one dry, but then you see that fish that's like, I'm going to eat that. Oh, yeah. It's not like, oh, I uh, wonder what... Wonder what's happening over here. It's like, I'm gonna eat that. Yep, I'm going. That's mine. That's mine. Get out of yeah. here. Back up. <laughs> yep. And uh, that's that's what I was having today after on the towards the end of that flat. That was nice. But at the end of our dry fly session, with your double dry, your indicator, and your real dry fly, uh, we we started thinking. We're like, man, it'd be cool if Steve was here, Hobo Steve. But then Adam turned to me and says. Dude, we're out here to be product testing streamers. What the F are we doing fishing dry flies? So we just snipped those things off and headed on down the river and fish streamers. Brent's and not wrong. We could have sat there and beat up fish all day. Well, probably uh, at least for a, a good hours. at least for a good couple hours. Yeah. We I don't know, I kind of I kind of tend to get in that kind of rhythm where I'm like, all right. I've got I'm, this dialed. Yeah, I know I, it's good. We, Let's next challenge. Yeah. We went like four for five in this hole. One, we broke off. We caught three or hooked mm -hmm. three. One, we lost the boat. Landed two. Like, out of we had five eats and yeah. four eats and five casts. So we uh, kind of kept kept moving because we, I don't know. I was kind of like, yeah, we're 
we, we figured these guys out. out. We figured these guys out. We got some R and D, some sweet blue line patterns. Yeah, we had some blue line stuff to to test, and we had an un really an unknown amount of river ahead of us. Yeah, we we did not know how long this float took. Um, we got next to no intel on rapids or how long the float takes, whatever. I mean, we obviously looked it up a little bit, and we could tell there was no big rapids, but. We didn't know if this was going to take us three hours to float or six. Yeah. So. So we kept moving. We kind of kind of went in full streamer mode, right? Yeah. For the first couple, for the first little bit. So kind of walk through. We started with a white, mm -hmm. one of our new white patterns, which is coming out. I'm just, we're, we're still working on it with the meat missile. The meat missile. Do you like the meat missile? Is that like beeped out? The meat, the bird. Yeah. Yeah, we were fishing the bird. Right. No. When you say it's the meat missile, I don't know what the that is. The meat missile, okay. The meat missile was fucking sweet. That's a sweet fly. We it's did not good. catch many fish on that fly. It's It might have been a little big, as come to find out today, yeah. what was going on with it. I think it was the wrong color. And well, so we were running white. Mm -hmm. So why did we pick to run white? What started out, like, did you just have a feeling, you could feel it in your plums that we should run white? Feel or it where? Plum? No. <laughs> <laughs> so why did we put on the white meat missile to start? I just... White is a confidence color for me. Hands down. Totally. But um, it was cloudy. However, it was still really bright. So It was. Bright sky, bright fly. Good place to start. Add on the fact that white's confidence for me. And uh, we thought we'd go for white. I don't think you're wrong. I, li I like the idea. Yep. Yeah. But... We and it kind of makes sense because the rainbows are starting to spawn. So, I don't know, maybe the bows are running around being a little flashy. We knew there was brown trout in the area, so... It's a hot take. Hot take. Maybe. Okay. But, well, so it didn't... That one didn't pan out, though, did it? The, the white... The white. I don't think we got any chases on white. I don't think, you, I don't think we did. Mm -hmm. So then we... Somewhat quickly switch to a new R and D fly that is brand new, hot off the, hot off the vice. Uh, we switched over to that in olive, right? Pretty similar size, slightly different swimming action. Bigger, I think, like more full body. L yeah, more body. The meat whistle just whoosh, whistles through the water, but this one was mm. like. <laughs> when you go to the fly product page, I really need. This Down is more of a versus a. <laughs> so, yeah. So we switch over to the olive. Uh, I have it's like a, a more of a natural sculpin shape profile. Yep. And kind of olive fat color. Yep. Kind of fat. Doesn't doesn't swim well, but pushes a good amount of water yeah, from but the it still head. Wiggles a bit. Yeah. Like it doesn't glide and turn far. Right. But it wiggles slow. And yes. Yeah. I mean, it's got a killer movement to it. Mm -hmm. um, so we fished that a little bit. How do, we, how do we do there? So we, one of the things I like to do is we... I don't want to just change generally. I don't want to change just one aspect of my fly if I feel it's not working. I want to change like more than one. Yeah. So like I'm not just going to change color, but I'm also going to change depth. Or like I'm, I might change color and profile. Yeah. So the scientists out there... We'll disagree with that wholeheartedly. I don't like that. If you're gonna if you're gonna track your variables, then you only change one at a time. But I agree. I I think that color doesn't matter all that much. Like in the fact that if you have the wrong color, I think you'll get flashes, but I don't think you'll get full commitments. Yes. So Right. We didn't get any flashes, no feedback on white. So we were like, all right, white's fucking out right now. Yep. We're going to Olive. Olive. So change, yeah, obviously a stark change there. Yep. And swap to a different profile, mm -hmm. a little different swimming Which movement. happened to be a shallower swimming fly. Right. Like it didn't it did. go as deep. Um, and we didn't get much action on that. But that is the one that we got the, we did get the one good flash or eat at the yes. boat. Yes, yes. We got one actual eat at the boat. Yeah. Uh, and I forgot to sharpen the hook, so it came unbuttoned. No. <laughs> well, wasn't an eat. You guys, if you streamer fish much, you probably have had this. 
mm-hmm. where you'd have a fly, a fish come up and just, they'll bump your fly. They'll, I don't know really what they're doing. Just testing to see what it is. Has I think sometimes real. they can grab the hook like just backwards and not even get to the hook. Yeah, or I, I think they may just, instead of trying to eat it, because mm-hmm. I don't miss fish that come to murder a fly. Very rare. It's rarely. hard to miss those fish. But, you know, I think every once in a while you'll have fish come up and just maybe touch it. It'd be like, yeah. what the fuck is this? Or like if the hook is one way, maybe they grab the shank just with the tip of their mouth and that's enough to give you a tug, but the the hook part is still outside of their mouth. Could, yeah. That's also, yeah, that's definitely also an option. But anyway, Whatever, whether it's a short strike, whatever you want to call it, we got some feedback. Some interest yep. in the fly. Mm-hmm. And definitely, as you said, on the river today, every anytime you see a fish, you need to learn something from that. Yeah. So we definitely learned. Well, so yeah, that fish, we it happened after a faster riffle. So you have a constriction, fast riffle, and it has those like seams slash eddies on either side. So those are your traditional... You know, most oh. of the year there's fish in those seams Money. and stuff. But as it flattens out after that constriction and starts to slow down and is almost frog water but not quite, that's where we got it. And it was in the center channel. Yep. So we know, like that to me is confirmation, okay, these fish are still in winter. Yes. Deep and slow yep. mode. Yep. So... We kind of ran with that most of the day. I mean, as we were passing the constrictions, we were fishing those highly probable eddies and seams, but yep. we didn't move anything out of those seams. No. Not at all. They were all, every fish that we moved, which deep wasn't really that many, but... Right. Deep, slow water. Yep. That was, was that the only fish that we moved that we did not catch? No, because there was one more later that I did. Was, but you had a better uh, hookup right. ratio. It was two yeah, fish two back, back to back. back. So I think we ended up switching. After you fish the, yeah, that guy for a minute, and put on another R and D fly that I've been working on. This was kind of, well, a lot of our patterns end up taking multiple kind of turns before they ever come out to you guys. This is the third iteration that this fly is on, and I personally, after today, am getting pretty close to saying that just putting the stamp on it and saying that's it. Swapped over to something st- stuck with the olive, right? The olive worked. We got the good the good fish flash and tried to eat yep. on the olive. We got the commitment. So we swapped to a small profile deep olive. Yep. So again, we went deeper because we we had confirmed with all of our clues like okay, they're probably still in the center channel deeper wintering runs. So let's make it easier for ourselves to be down in the strike zone, like in the center channel, as quick and as long as possible. Yep. And I went small profile. Mm-hmm. One of Hobo Steve's number one, just downsize for success. We don't... Steve, I we don't, don't like your rule. I don't either. I hate... I Honest to God, I hate that it works. I don't believe it. I don't believe in it. It happened today. You literally were on the boat when it happened. As far as I'm concerned, doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, whatever. <laughs> so, <laughs> if you love fishing streamers, you still want to fish streamers. We all want to fish those streamers that are, you know, what, f- five inches? Ten, twelve, yeah. T- Ten to twelve inches or yeah. so. <laughs> um, but, unfortunately, we can't always use those. Or, you can. Well, you but can, but you may not catch might fish. might be easier. I usually tend to start out, especially if I'm wanting to streamer fish with something a little bigger. Mm-hmm. I'll probably change like we did. Color and profile. I'll probably have one or two color profile changes. Then, especially if I get a little bit of feedback, I'm going to go to something a little smaller. Yep. Uh, a couple examples from us would be like the Sculperino, which we ended up doing later. Um, like the Madison Sculpin, you know, that... You know, kind of going from that bigger articulated to maybe the one with the trailer hook. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. What do you think? Three? Like three to four inches yeah. instead of like four to six. Yep. Yeah, that's like snack size to me. Yeah. Yeah, it's not a whole meal. And obviously the fish weren't chasing. I think a lot of the fish that we found were really like, you just bopped them on the nose with it. Right. Like, no, I like that. Yep. So anyways... Downsized to kept the same color, but changed up two of the other things. We got deeper 
and we got smaller. Thinner. Thinner thinner profile yeah. and smaller. Which helps with sinking. Overall anyway. size, true. Then we picked up two fish back to back on that fly pretty quick. Real quick. I didn't even stop filming the first one and you were yeah. hooked up. Yeah, and I was already hooked up. Again, on the second one, um, which I think also goes to show wintering patterns. Yeah. You're going to find, find the if you find fish. one, you're going to find more. Yep. So if you are out there nymphing, you're out there, like on, especially on foot streamer fishing, or even if you're in the boat, unfortunately our boat didn't have an anchor today. But Whose fault is that? Nobody's, probably. Yeah, probably not. Steven's. I'd blame Steve for it. Definitely on a wintering kind of pattern, you'd want to stop the boat, anchor up, mm -hmm. hop out of the boat, or say to yourself, okay, great, this is some water we need to hit hard because there's yeah. going to be other fish around this one mm -hmm. fish. And uh, that proved exactly true today. I got a question for you. When you find that the fish are potted up like wintering holes, do you run a streamer through over and over and over again? Or do you switch to nymphs to try and pick off more fish out of the same hole? Is the camera on or not? No, I, I would try the streamer like probably three to four times. If we anchored up at a hole and we were like, there's fish in this hole, mm -hmm. I'd try the streamer probably like maybe half a dozen mm -hmm. runs with a couple of different uh, adjustments, right? Like maybe tr cast really high up in the seam, a big mend, mm -hmm. let it sink super deep. I might try the inside seam, the middle, the outside seam. Okay. So I'd probably like work it hard with a streamer, but, but kind not kind of a once over. I'd give it a once over, but like not the same cast. Over. Yeah, six times. Okay, I'd probably run six or so casts in different areas. Okay, then then you'd swap to nymph. I'd swap to the nymph. Pluck fish out of the same seam. Yeah, yeah. If you're gonna if you're if you're on that like there is a fish that is going to be holding in this seam. Yeah, and especially in a wintering pattern, bopping them in the nose with a pheasant tail. That's just, that just works. Yeah. So towards the end of the day, we had a long, a pretty long dry spell. We went through some water that wasn't ideal. There wasn't any of those like true troughs of those, those wintering runs. Um, it's my excuse anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then we, we got to the, what we thought was the last run and ended up swinging Sculperinos through there. And I actually hooked the last fish, dumped the line across and it was swinging across, but I just started reeling, reeling the line up and hooked a fish on the swing. Yep. So it was towards the center of the, the channel. However, that was definitely under tension. Like I think yeah. that fish may have been chasing. But regardless, one more to finish the day and then uh, we pretty much wanted to get back home. Yeah, we were about done. Ready we were, to eat we some We were food. hungry. We were ready to get this podcast over with so we mm -hmm. go to bed. We are pretty tired. Uh, but I think the last point from that, from Brent's last fish there, the last fish of the day was, you know, definitely try some different retrieves, some different techniques. If you're in good water, you're really feeling good about the water, whether mm -hmm. it's you've caught the fish there in the past, you're like, this is a great spot to be. It mm -hmm. just looks fishy. It's marking the bills for, you know, the other fish that you caught that day yep. and you're not getting fish. Yeah, change your retrieve. Yeah, change your retrieve also is big. You know, maybe not uh, always going across and downstream or yep. whatever. Maybe trying two or three other approaches. Yep. Who knows? Might might worked, give it a shot. Worked for work today. Just cast the line, reel it up like you're giving up all hope, and you'll hook a fish. And they'll hook. Yep. Every time, guaranteed. Get, mark our words. That's a guarantee. <laughs> but well. All right. I think that was it for the first part. Yep. Day one in the books. Day one in the books. And uh, you got anything else for the no. folks we'll from day one? We'll see you guys tomorrow. There we'll we go. back on the river. Okay. So, day two. We started off on a stretch of river that you fished a lot. I fished it a good bit, yep. I have never fished the river or, obviously, that stretch. And... We started out, looked like really cool streamer water. And it um, typically is. A lot of hidey holes for trout. Pocket water. A lot of pocket water. Stuff that honestly I feel like would be a real... A lot of that river, especially the, where we started fishing, would be tough to nymph. Yeah, it's not... Um, it's never deep and consistent. Right. By the time your nymphs get down to depth, 
you would you're already dragging be, or you're out of the yeah the or, pocket. or you'd be at a, another rock somewhere yeah from what from what we saw um so running some lighter weight streamers over the top of those pockets mm -hmm. um having you know a, obviously a lot of bigger trout are ambush predators mm -hmm. where they're going to be looking to kind of nab an easy meal maybe floating past their rock um or a dry fly, but yep. certainly is not dry fly time of year. There's a lot of midges, but we haven't seen a lot of heads come. No, I'm, I don't like to blind fish a midge. I'll blind fish a hopper. Yep. But Chubby, prospecting hopper. with a single midge, mm. <laughs> not not my cup of tea. Not what I'm doing. <laughs> so we start streamer fishing. We move a couple fish off the bat. Right off the bat. Right. Straight out of the boat. At ramp. the ramp, we really think like, dang. This is okay. going to be a day. Here we're, we go. We're going to have some success today. And we're going to get you guys some good content. <laughs> and then what happened? Those were like the four fish we moved <laughs> for the first half of the float. Yes. So we tried to grind it out. We swapped to some different color streamers, some different profile streamers. We did a... That day we did a really good job at swapping depth, profile, color in an orderly fashion... You know, we, we went from one end to the other on size. Then we changed to the other end of the spectrum on color. Then we went to the middle with an olive and a midsize. I mean, we, we, we covered the bases. It. Yeah. yeah. And then we even nymphed a couple runs. We got a little lower in this float. The water did start turning a little more into nymph water. There started yeah. being some more longer, deep runs. Mm -hmm. We anchored up, we already had our nymph rig rigged up, yep. and we ran it, and you caught a small brown in the first couple casts. Right. Yeah, pretty much right off. Rewarded for doing the nymph. Yep. Rewarded for the nymph, and then uh, we eventually caught another pretty good bow. You caught one good rainbow yep. on that nymph, yes. which at least that turned out well. Yeah, that was cool. But one of the things that I feel like we did really fail on yesterday... Was the morale. Yes. Going on trips with, whether it's a new friend you're fishing with or whatever, uh, whether it's a group of friends you've been fishing with a while, managing the morale in the boat or, you know, within your party as you're fishing can make or break a trip. And day two, we didn't do good. We, were, we both, we got in the boat, we got the follows on the streamer, and we were like, yes, we finally, like, we yep. got what we came for. It's going to happen. Here we go. And we both, I think, got pretty set on making that happen. But the river was telling us, not right now. Yeah. And I, we tried to force it. I we did. We tried to force the streamer down their throat a little too much. Which is... Through the first, what, first part where, of What's the, the difference, though, between forcing it and grinding it out? <laughs> Whether you catch a big fish or not. Yeah, I mean, I guess I that know. can be. Like, one fish can change the morale, but we should, being logical people, try and control the morale better. We should. But you I and I got pretty down. We got pretty down. We were definitely a little disgruntled mm -hmm. trying to figure out how to get these fish to eat a streamer. Yep. And then... We started switching back to the streamer. We were like, well, we finally caught this fish on this nymph. We got a fish in the boat. Mm -hmm. I think that fish that we ended up nymphing at the end, that was a pretty good rainbow, yep. kind of did help change the morale of, of okay. around a little bit. Yep. And then some, some different weather kind of happened because it spit snow a little bit mm -hmm. in the morning. But then it started getting a little sunny. It, and then it ended up bright and sunny. It ended up pretty bright and sunny. Yeah. And that's when we swapped over to that white flashy streamer. Yep. And that's when we started getting some follows. Uh, they started trickling in a lot. Like one here, and then you grind for a, a little. Then you yep. get one, another one, a little sooner, another one. And it started to pick up. Pick up. As in, it did. we were moving fish. Not They were not committing. At least that's a good step in the right direction. Mm-hmm. And then we ended up catching a brown and a pretty good bow on the streamer to end the day out. Yeah. So, 
I mean, that was pretty much it. But one we thing... got we got off the water with high morale, but definitely there in the middle of the day. Yeah, it was a huge lull. And I think the one thing that I notice when morale gets down, in my particular case, I get lazier and I get less creative. Yep. And by lazier, I mean I'm not willing to size down my tippet. I'm not willing to add split shot. I'm not willing to adjust the bobber as often as I should or try different retrieves on the streamer. Like, that's how the morale affects me. Yeah. Is I just don't want to try any harder because I feel defeated. Yes. So I just like, yes, give up. That's exactly right. And that's that, tough. Yeah. You can't be having that. That's tough. I don't know how to fix that. But well, we got to keep the morale. Up. We got to keep the morale up. And today, we did a lot better at that. We did. So I guess we're moving into today now. We should day three. Day three. So day three, we went down to a lower section of the river where we know there is decent numbers of fish and some really good sized fish. This isn't like the full on home run swing, only big fish section but approaching that i feel like it's a good mix between amount of fish and its fish size yes it's bigger water for sure mm -hmm. usually bigger water can mean bigger fish yep bigger water can also mean more fish because you've got more area you've got more food sources you've got more holding water sure as a general thing generally yeah. but on this particular river this is like the balance between Good numbers of fish and big fish. Big fish. Yep. 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 So, True. how did we start off the day? Well, we started throwing streamers, Brent. Can you can you believe that? <laughs> <laughs> um, we still had our nip fraud rigged up from yesterday. Yep. Um, we but and we what happened right when we put in, and we put in next to two other boats. Two other boats launched, a, a guide boat, two guide boats launched right in front of us. And uh, they immediately hooked up on fish with nymphs. With, with nymphs. 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 And uh, so we, you know, in our boneheaded selves, <laughs> said, you know what? There's fish there. Gonna we're going to... We're going to get them with the streamer because we know listen, those fish are over there. This is going to be a great day. Yeah. These guys are already on it. They're on it. Um, well, so we didn't put on the nymphs and capitalize on what we saw other people doing. We, I really did, and I still don't think I'm wrong until I, did, I still didn't think I was wrong. Think that, okay, we, we're going we're gonna to figure this out. We're, well, let's dial this in on the streamers again. So, we're, again, we're on a different stretch of river each day of what we're talking to you guys about. Mm -hmm. Because we wanted to be going through this process of, okay, we're on a brand new river just like you guys kind of ask us. Yep. We wanted to be putting ourselves in these scenarios that you guys ask us about. Mm -hmm. So, you have not fished this stretch of water this year, it's, right? I actually don't fish this stretch often at all. There you go. And I'd never fished this. Yep. So... It was pretty new to us. We di really didn't have any good fishing reports, but it is a stretch of river that some guides fish on. Yep. So we did obviously know what kind of flies to be using, that kind of thing. Ge yeah, generally. generally speaking, yeah. So we start out with these streamers really hoping to dial in on what's going on. Yep. And then we didn't. Yeah, so, <laughs> the, but but here's the thing. I think today we did a lot better because uh, we started off, you know, doing the streamer thing how we like to do it. You cast to the bank, you strip off the bank. Uh, maybe if it's a little deeper and slower, you you hit close to the bank and you give it a mend. Let the fly sink a little and strip slow. But generally speaking, we were casting at the bank and stripping, mm -hmm. you know, straight off the bank. So one thing we did improve on today, and we did keep good morale was we tried a couple different ways to fish streamers. Yes. Like, fairly not traditional. Yes. We got to uh, we got to the first big nymph run, and we were like, all right, we know we could catch them on nymphs because everyone else has been doing it. We, we think we're good enough to catch them on nymphs. Uh, so we tied up an indicator streamer rig. Yep. 
which was the first time I had tried that. So that I'm, specific rig, you fished nymph or streamers on an indicator before, though, right? Never Dead in drifting. a river, though. Oh, only on lakes. Yeah, it is a deadly tactic. It did not prove deadly today. What we did was a little different, and you're also right; it did not prove deadly. Yeah. But we basically ran a bobber, a long leader, a streamer on a tag, and then a cannonball of split shot below it. Yep. And then we a, would, a bounce rig. Pretty much. Yeah. We rigged up a bounce rig with a sculpin behind it. Sure. Is what we did. Yeah. And I think that could use some tuning in and be quite effective, but we don't know that we touched a fish on that. Admittedly, I've never fi I've fished bounce rigs. And I have fished streamers below indicators, like a nymph. Just straight up dead. Like, a, like a nymph. Wooly Booger is a great one. Mm -hmm. We've got a couple different flies that I like to fish just yeah. under an indicator. They work great. But I don't think I've ever fished streamers on a bounce rig. So that was new for me. Yeah. Well, it didn't, well, it work, didn't work today. Work today. <laughs> However, we didn't we gave it like two passes down the most probable looking water. But we, we both had in mind, we, we did. We broke out a, a different streamer line today, more of a sinking head. Um, actually, Adam did a description of that line today, so put that here. Hey, Adam. Rig number one of the day. What is rig number one? So, we're on a big piece of water here. Um, we changed out fly lines, so we've got one rod with a fly line that is going to be really good for drop-offs, ru smaller runs, um, that's a lighter... What is that line? A sink tip line. Okay. And we also and we also rigged up a second streamer rod with a heavier fly line. Uh, still a sink tip, has a much faster sink rate. It's basically like a sinking head with a floating running line. Okay. <laughs> uh, does it show how long we've been recording? Fif yeah, you got 15 gotta... minutes. Okay, so we got 10 minutes till we got to... Yep. Okay, so Adam broke out the uh, the shooting head sinking line, this heavy, heavy sinking line. And, and paired with, I mean, it was a big fly, but paired with some pretty heavy eyes yep. on that fly, yep. dumbbell eyes, to really help get that thing down. Yeah, but that streamer choice compared to some of the others, was also paired up with the style of fishing we were planning. So the big shooting headline, the idea was to cast up and across the current, let it get down as it comes parallel with you, and then strip across, like dragging it on the bottom. Yes. But the streamer we picked to do that with was a much more flowy streamer, mm -hmm. so that you didn't, so that it looked like it was swimming even when you weren't necessarily stripping right, it. Right, So A lot of real flowy materials, marab had a lot of marabou in it. Marabou and synthetics, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it kind of flowed through the water as it was being dragged or slowly stripped. Yeah. And um, we actually put some time into that. We really did. We, we took three or four good, good passes down there and, you know, worked it hard and did not get paid for that one. Um, in some long stretches of water. Yeah. We tried that. Mm -hmm. But that is definitely one of those things that you could... We could go back tomorrow and catch one mid-20s inch fish on that yeah. tactic. Yeah. I had a lot of confidence in that tactic. And I still don't think I've... Like, I'm not going to give up on it yet. But I haven't proven it to be truly effective here. That tactic has worked for me for sure in other yeah. fisheries. Yeah. But... So then, so then what do we do? We... Just told the folks that we messed up. Yeah, we didn't. We tried that. something new. Oh, but but like like we were saying earlier, like we kept the morale a bit higher, which let the creativity flow a bit, and we we grinded a little harder. So we tried the drop shot uh, bounce rig, and we tried the the shooting head, you know, full sinking line, and we didn't let that get us down too bad. So. You know, we, we accepted that, like, we're going to have to grind yep. it out for maybe one fish today. Yep. If we want to do the streamer thing. Yes. Well, we did end up deciding to nymph a little bit. We found some runs mm -hmm. that were going to be good streamer, or good, good nymph runs. 
where you know there's a pretty good run empty into a long straight mm -hmm. that still has a little bit of current but is tailing out into a bigger stretch of river mm -hmm. and we fish that pretty hard we middle of the day we fish a few of those pretty hard with the nymphs yeah but by that time i believe the fishing had turned off and the guide boats that we were around we quit seeing anybody hooked up yeah yeah none outside of the, of the morning because we ground that streamer all morning yeah and that's like during that time there were guide boats that were hooking fish on nymph rigs like we did consistently yeah, yeah. around us but we never saw anyone with anything big, but they absolutely were catching fish. Yeah. So we decided that today we're we're committing to the streamer, and even though they're catching fish on on nymphs, we assumed we could do that, but we wanted to try and dial in these different techniques on streamers. Yeah. And we did not dial them in. <laughs> I think we no. like. We could go back with more clues now and refine those techniques and maybe make it work, but we might still be too cold. I think the water is like 37 to 40 degrees, which is still pretty cold for a streamer yeah. bite. Yeah. We're definitely trying to force something that doesn't are. want to give it to us. We are. We did end up catching one or two fish on, on nymphs. On the nymphs, yep. When we hit water that was really good, textbook nymph water. We did swap over to the nymphs a few times, really just for a couple of short runs before it was back to the streamers. Yes. And uh, we did end up grinding out a couple of fish on the nymphs, even after it kind of died off. Mm -hmm. But I think maybe a little bit of the point there is that a little bit of a takeaway for us since we were filming for you guys. But I think, too, one of the things that maybe you should consider to take away from this is if you see other people nymphing and you need to put a few fish in the boat, maybe you should nymph first and then streamer fish later. Yeah. Like <laughs> go get your rocks off and then try and dial in the weird technique. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we didn't necessarily need to catch the fish on the nymphs. Yeah. But, but maybe it would we, have been nice. Midday we were happy to have like, okay, yep. Yeah. The fish are still open mouthed and eating. Fish still have mouths and they still eat. Yeah, so that's good to know. At one point, we were convinced that these fish had sewed their mouths shut. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But I think there's definitely a little bit of a lesson to be learned there that if you're hard-headed like us, great, but then you can't be mad at yourself yeah. when you don't catch anything. Like we were yesterday, but yes. we managed a lot better today. Right. We did. Yeah. We did. We again went through the size and color gamut for the most part, but we stayed, you know below your standard sex dungeon size like yes your standard sex dungeon was the biggest we fished yes through most of the day then we went down to like pretty small minnow you know, size minnow stuff yep yep and we fished uh you know we fished those pretty hard yep small sculpins we fished the mm -hmm. sculpin i mean we fit we ran the gamut of bait fish that would be yep in there and then i theorized that these fish don't want to eat a, a, a small bait fish for a meal. Well, it's obvious they're not eating, or else we would have been catching fish. Or at least turning fish. Or at least, at minimum, yep. having fish turn. Okay, so the theory was that these fish don't want to eat a bait fish for a meal right now. They're not eating streamers. No. Or else we would have been moving they're not fish, willingly catching fish. Eating streamers. Right. Yep. So... We've got a few big R&D flies. The meat missile. The, the large version of the missile came out. Yeah. And we decided that to get these fish to eat a streamer, we were going to have to piss them off and make them bite or claw at a intruder in their house and... It was more of a protective thing than a uh, than a meal. Yes. Yeah. So we needed to get up in their grill with something scary. Something big. Yep. Well, that ended up working. It it worked. We uh we caught one one <laughs> good fish. One good fish in standard streamer water that you would expect 
a brown yep. trout to be in. Textbook water. It was Ta- textbook I mean, it summertime. Was tail out, soft water with fast next water to fast current, yep. next to it. And it was like on a faster strip too. Yep. So he was obviously he obviously chased it. Yeah. So and, I, and I don't know what that. Why was there one fish? Because we we tried to replicate that. Like there was a couple good runs afterwards that we replicated it almost identically. And the water was at least clear enough today that I feel like if a fish followed. We would have seen it. We would have seen it. We've had we, a good chance of seeing it. We would have had at least a good chance of seeing a fish follow. And we didn't see follows. We were, I mean, we were just casting hopes and dreams. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. Except for the one textbook eat on the big and scary streamer. Yep. There I you have it. it. That's all we know, folks. I can't really tell you a lot about that because I don't really know what was happening. Mm-hmm. I don't think that you should take, the lesson you should take from this is put on the biggest, scariest streamer on the planet. I disagree. That is the lesson <laughs> I am giving here. <clears throat> if all I'm, else fails, <laughs> attack. <laughs> Play <laughs> offense. Go, go bigger. <laughs> yes. Go big or go home. Steve, Hobo Steve, you do not downsize for success. You, Up, you upsize for, for success. success. By the end of the day, you're throwing a foot-long musky streamer. Pike that's... flies, yeah. A triple. <laughs> yeah. Well, whatever. Yep. I think the real takeaway message, though, for real, is to keep trying something different that you are have not tried or are not yep. already doing. And when the morale is low, you quit getting creative, and you just don't try the new, right. different, Right, you quit trying thing. as much. Yep. But yeah, I mean, we tried everything... As in normal size streamers, we threw the and kitchen different sink colors. Today, for but sure. we didn't try anything really out of the box, aside from the the deep sinking line and the uh, bounce rig. Yeah. So we tried the, those two different things, but we still had to switch it up again. Yes. To some different variation. Fuck. Did you fish all day? Yeah, I did. <laughs> Sorry. Mm. Nothing well, wrong with that. Well, I guess I mean, this is what we had for you. That's what we had. I don't know where that really left you, but we're gonna continue on <laughs> for your sake. Yeah, and um, to be to end the episode ten extravaganza for the people, we're gonna ditch the boat. <laughs> we're gonna we're venture out on foot. We got a way day tomorrow. Yes. I'm excited. Are you? No. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited to go wade. Uh, new spot. Yep. It's kind of, it's pretty small, you said. It's a much smaller river, yep. And uh, potential for some dry eats, you say. Maybe. This one I is think. more of, it acts more like a freestone. Okay. Like a true freestone. And then uh, there you, uh, hopefully there's also some good pocket water as well for streamers. Yep. So I'm ready for that. Well, here we are. It's the end of the trip. It's the wrap up for the extravaganza. Episode 10 extravaganza. Our faces are slightly more red. Yep, mostly because I'm embarrassed about how bad we did. No, she. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, what happened today, Brent? We went to a river that you knew pretty well. A little wade mission, all on foot. We ditched the boats. We went all on foot. I didn't want to fish out of the raft again today. Yep. I couldn't, honestly, because my legs are bruised from where that <laughs> casting bar was. So you're admitting boats are better than rafts? No, I'm admitting that boat is better than that raft. The my boat. raft... You'd still rather fish out of the boulder. So it, Honestly, it's a little tough. I wouldn't own the boulder over my raft. Yeah. But... In the right scenarios, yes, the boulder is better. You but if you're it. only going to have one boat. You heard it here, folks. Raft. You heard it here. I understand why Brent always told me, he's like, I don't like fishing out of rafts. Because that raft, I don't like fishing out of that raft either. It's tough. But I get anyway. it. Anyway. All right. Well, so we ditched the boats. We started wading today. It started out real tough. 
It did. We went to a spot that I was pretty confident in as far as getting streamer eats all winter. I mean, I fished this spot December and January, and we got plenty of streamer eats. Well, well, we get straight down to the river, and I'm thinking, uh-oh, here we go. This is going to be pretty good. Because as soon as we... I mean, I hadn't made four casts and got a chase from a pretty small brown. Mm -hmm. yeah. At the tail out, got a chase from another small brown. Mm -hmm. And then got two more chases after that, but no fish committed. No commitment. So, anyways, we, we streamer fished that spot you know quite a ways down the river and yep. we we didn't get anything and so what were some of our what were a few of the things that we did we started out with a larger fly that was olive and had some flash mm -hmm. got a couple of smaller fish swirled on it yep in but faster no water. eats yeah in faster yep. shallower water yep. but no eats we swapped over to an olive thinner profile Olive with less flash. Yep. And we no fish, eats. None. But we fish that deeper and slower in the wintering yep. runs. Yep. Fish that deep and slow in the winter runs. No eats. Then we swapped to white. Yep. So we got some flashy, little smaller. Still no eats. Then we did the gray with the flashy belly. Yep. So kind of a little bit of both, right? Had like the that they natural olive back. olivey back. And then, but the had the belly. flash belly underneath. One of yeah. our new favorite R and D flies. Um, so then we switched that and started getting a little bit more action. Barely, R but barely. Well, you we caught did, a fish on we it. We did land a fish on it in the deep, slow wintering run. Yep. So we've we were moving fish in the faster, shallower water. Yep. Not necessarily winter water. Yes. And then we were catching fish in the winter run. Yep. Albeit not many. Yep. Exactly. Well, and so I would also mention one of the things that I did once I swapped over to that smaller fly is I downsized the tippet a size as well. Were you down at 12 or 10? So I we were running at 15 because yep. it was the same leader that we used yesterday mm -hmm. on that big water, yep. which I think the 15 still was perfect for. Yep. And then for the smaller water, went to a smaller fly. We were getting chases but not eats. I did downsize to the 12 pound. Yeah. Although the water was pretty off colored. It was. That is true. But the 12 helps it sink faster. Yep. That's one of my go to tips is if you are getting chases but not commitments, go down a tippet size. Totally. Of course, so we were used the exact same fluorocarbon. We just went from a 15 pound to a 12 pound. Yep. The same stuff we make our leaders out of. So I just kind of swapped the. Tip the tippet all yeah. the way down to 12. Went with that small fly. We kind of got both of the colors that had been working. Yep. We got the chases on the flashy olive. And then we went olive with some more flash again. Mm -hmm. That belly, but that flashy smaller. belly. Much smaller. But much smaller. Yep. But the smaller flies definitely get deeper, quicker, don't they? Yep. Yeah, definitely. So Pretty heavy dumbbell eyes on that one that we were that ended up working in those deep runs yep yep so i mean that seemed like it seems to me like the fish were the fish are moving out of their wintering runs yep some of them yes. not all of them but the ones that are out of the wintering runs are not ready yep to go full streamer action i think in reality we're probably a week to two weeks early. I would agree. Because it seems like they're right there. I mean, we caught the one brown yesterday that yep. was there and did it how we wanted them to do it. Yep. I think potentially what's go what could I guess could be going on is we've got... Uh, we're in a transition period. Mm -hmm. it, this would be my theory as to kind of why... Personally, we, our, our trip didn't go quite like we wanted it to. Right. I think personally for me, it's because it's a transitioning time of year mm -hmm. between winter to spring. We're right here in the middle of it. Yep. 
I think there's probably a week or two that the fish are trying to figure out is it, is it spring yet? Is it still is it spring? Mm -hmm. Like are, are we doing spring things or what's what's going on? Right. Well, and one I night think, we had a 17 degree low. Yep. And that was like a, an outstanding low. Pretty low. Yeah. I mean, it was pretty cold. Because the rest of the nights, the low has been mid 20s. And then the, I mean, during the day, it's hot out there right now. Yeah, it's 45 I mean, it's degrees. 45 and super sunny. Yep. So hmm. I think overall that's what was going on. But our, the lower stretch of water that we went to, it was a little dirty because of some runoff, I think. Yep. It, some ice is start ice is starting to come off on the lower elevation but we ended up wanting to hit one more spot and we kind of went uphill yeah we went up river to where it was somehow the water got dirtier as we went up yeah and had more and more ice at higher elevation yeah but i so the reason it was clearer down low is there's a tributary that was running in very very clean yeah. So the, the dirty water was getting diluted a bit. Gotcha. But, uh, man. Anyways, we got up a little higher to a different run, and we said, all right, we're almost out of time. Uh, Adam's got to hit the road. Let's uh, let's hang up the streamers. We could grind it out for another one or two, but let's hang out the streamers and, and get the nymphs going. And I think we tried the streamers at least for, like, two, like, glaring obvious streamer holes. Mm -hmm. Nothing. 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 And being high, even higher elevation, we figured, okay, if the fish are in a transition pe period lower, transitional stage lower, maybe they haven't hit that transitional stage on the upper. If it's colder water, yeah. Colder water. Stuff. There were definitely was higher elevation, you could tell. Mm -hmm. I mean, you'll see in the fi videos, there's snow. I mean, we're walking on snow and ice, yep. a lot of it, versus yep. we hadn't really touched that the rest of this trip. Correct. So somewhat of the theory was a little higher elevation. Maybe these fish are have not transitioned towards that spring time yet, and maybe they're still stuck in their winter ways. Like full on winter. Yeah. Full on winter. So it did seem like that because we picked one deep slow, and we were fishing the slowest part of the run too. Yep. Yep. Slow the slowest deepest water that we could find. Yep. And I caught a decent rainbow, and then Adam freaking ninth inning hero. Cut Freaking it. pounded. <laughs> that was a nice bow. It was a good bow. Well, I mean, those were both good fish. Yeah. Those were both really good fish. We rigged up, essentially, what we thought the nymphs would be. We had a slap daddy. Duh. Just, uh, just a, a fantastic nymph that is kind of just... It, imitates a lot of different stuff. Mm -hmm. It could be a really small mayfly. It could be a bigger midge. It could be, you know, a lot of different bugs. Totally. Maybe, uh, maybe even a really small stonefly even. Yeah, that's um, what I was thinking, like a, a small stonefly. Something. Anyways, and then we had a your midge. check midge on there. Like a paragon midge. Yeah. Yep. And, man, you whacked one two minutes into, the, into fishing that run. Yep. And then... We and then we were swapping rods, <laughs> and uh, you didn't even we didn't even get your stuff. The go it wasn't we were, even loaded you, back up. We yeah. were filming the with the GoPro, and Brent was swapping over to the GoPro yeah. and everything that we were going to film with. And all of a sudden, yeah. I'm hooked up. <laughs> and we were like, dude, let's just let's just end it on a good. Let's one. just call it right here. <clears throat> um, but yeah, I mean, back to back, those fish were in the same run. I mean, yeah. three three feet from each other. We Roughly. probably pulled one fish off of the the spot, and then the other fish slid into that spot and caught it. In the caught same it spot. again. Yeah. yeah, it was like the almost <clears throat> identical drift. I mean, it was literally we we filmed with Brent's fish. Here we go. We let it go. I, I picked the rod up, getting ready to start fishing. As Brent's taking off the GoPros and stuff, I just flip one out, and there he was. Yep. Yeah, we probably could have stayed and caught some more on the nymphs. I, I mean, yeah, that's kind of been the story with the whole trip. Is you know, if we wanted to put the time in nymphing the deep, slow water, we could have caught a lot more fish. Yes. Our numbers would have been much better. Yeah. But personally, I'm good for like one or two nymph fish and then... Yeah. And then I want to... Right. Like, I am I feel a little bad. My wife tells me all the time this in like other aspects of my life. that I'm like ready to just like, what's the next thing? What's the yeah. next thing? And I don't know why, but I feel like when I catch a couple fish on a nymph, I'm yeah. like, all right, I figured this out. Yeah, it's done. Like, I could just keep doing this. Yeah. 
But let's go do something else now. Now I got my confidence up. I know there's fish here. Mm -hmm. I kind of have an idea of where these fish are sitting. Yeah. Just like we mentioned earlier with the a couple days ago with the you know nymphing as a prospecting tool. Yeah. If you don't is. know where fish are at, you don't know the depth they're at, you don't know kind of what water they're holding in. Mm -hmm. Nymph it for a bit. Yeah. Catch nymph three or four. Water. Yeah. Catch three or four. Get on the board. Get your confidence up. Yep. And then get. Go back to the streamer or drive, you know. Yeah, and then you and those. then you've got a better idea. Okay, here's the water I need to be casting in. Here's kind of the depth that we need to be working with, mm -hmm. and use that use that nymph rig as a uh, use as a prospecting tool. So, basically, the the trip was the idea was to get Adam out to Colorado and have uh, show him a bunch of different water because last time we fished together, we only got to fish one section together, and the fishing is starting to get a lot better out here or like it's showing those signs of, okay, yep. it's almost streamer time, like full on streamer time. So I was like, all right, Adam, you got the time. Let's get out here and I'll show you around three different rivers, bunch of different water. And we'll see what, you know, what we can figure out on the streamers. Yeah. And so we did three rivers, but four different stretches of river. Yeah. So yeah. that's pretty cool. Yeah, it was, a, it was, I had a lot of fun. I mean, yeah. we, we had to earn every fish we got. Yep. And Nothing was super easy. But we got dry fly fish. We got fish on like the slow swing. Yep. On a streamer. We got nymph fish. And, and we, we got, got the standard chased. chasing big, you know, eight, nine yeah. inch fly fish. So we did a little bit of everything. You can't argue with that. Can't argue with that. Just. Nothing was very consistent. Yeah. <laughs> Could never really, really get anything specifically other I other than the nymph, I guess, and the dries the first day when we were fishing the rising fish. But mm -hmm. really couldn't get the streamer game dialed in and said, here's what's happening and here's what we're doing. Yeah. And then could make that successful. But I just don't think it's, I just, I think we're two weeks or so too early. Yeah. You depending need a couple, on weather. Yeah. Weather dependent. If it stays like this, I think it's two weeks, about yeah. two weeks. I think we'll be in runoff, like the starting stages of runoff. If yeah, if it stays, it stays like, like this. this, yeah, that's true. So I had a lot of fun. Yeah, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you want one of your questions answered, shoot it over. You can leave it in a comment below. But honestly, the easiest way to do it is shoot it a Instagram DM. That way we can kind of filter through those make, and save the ones that mm -hmm. we need to answer, that we want to cover, we want to go over. Yep. Um, and even if we don't do it in the next episode, don't get discouraged because your question may be coming up before too long. Yeah, agreed. Well, I think there we have it. That's it. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Thanks.